I drive my car up to the lake as if there's someone to awake. I haven't been to bed for days. I live in a twilight haze. And I set my heart to the setting sun, and I hope that no one else has done it. And the drinks are never far. Open up the bar. Get all the great content. Ah, uh, no thank you. Sweet, I'm not too sure which coffee I'm going to start off with. Yeah, spoiled for choice. Yeah, that's right. It's <laughs> terrible. That's what happens when you own a cafe and you like coffee. You drink too much of it. Yeah, I bet. Um... So Dominic, Kia Indigo and Provisions is your shop in the yeah. art centre. Mm-hmm. Um, how many years has it been open now? Um, we're heading, this is year uh, four. Cool. So it'll be four years in November. Um, like, so we opened end of 2018. Oh, yep. I think... When did we open, Milton? Was it mid-2018? We opened, uh, three years ago. Oh, three, three and a half? It must be more three than three. We've been saying three years for quite a few years. Oh, uh, it was um, sort of in the mid-year, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Milton, I've just remembered I forgot something. Could you switch off that fridge? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. Just hold that button down for five seconds until it says off. There's always a bit of background kind of droning going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... Um, it's kind of annoying. Um, hey, okay, four years. Oh, yeah. Four? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Man, so, time yeah. flies. Crazy, so what, yeah. what's 2022? How did COVID, all of that, go down? Has uh, it been a nightmare or has it been... It, it, it wasn't a nightmare, yeah. Um, it was, yeah, pretty uh, uh, shock to the system when it first came about. Um and didn't really know what was going to happen, as no one did. And, but, yeah, it was actually not as bad as I expected for mm-hmm. business. I, uh, like, lockdown 2020, there, there was probably, like, four months that were pretty bad. Yeah. Um, uh, pretty tough going. Um, but we still got a fair bit of support online. Mm-hmm. Um, had you had you already had that set up? Yeah, yep. yep. Already had the website from from day one, um, cool. and was slowly sort of building that, like people following us through yeah, social media right. and like becoming aware of us uh, mm-hmm. and what we do, and um, and I was I was really worried because like up until uh, that point, like definitely the start of the business, the first year, like I've felt like most of our income was coming from like tourists domestic and yep. and international like a large international yeah. tourism because of where we are like in the art center mm. the tourist like information site was there like the yep. art site was there it was on like the all the lists of like what to do in Christchurch um, it, it's like one of those iconic buildings that mm. if you're visiting Christchurch, chances are you're probably going to go to the art centre. Mm. Mm. Um, so you just caught a glimpse of that world yeah. Of, yeah. of the potential future and yeah. then kind of got a little bit snatched away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, Same. completely. Borders <laughs> gone, like yeah. no tourists, no international yeah. tourists, no domestic tourists. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was really worried. Um, but... Um, the online kind of came through like it we did still have sales during lockdown mm. you know we, we were lucky in that sense like people can still buy clothes people yeah. can't buy a cup of coffee online that's right there was a there was a period there where they were saying even sh- selling stuff online through the mail was not going to be possible right yeah and yeah. you had to kind of um, identify yourself or somehow apply for 
an essential service, was it? Back in yeah, the day. I've yeah. almost sort of erased that part of my I know, it seems memory. so long ago, right? Yeah. But um, we didn't do that, like, we didn't do apply for no. essential service because we're like, mm. I, I felt we weren't yeah. an essential service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even though, like, we're selling clothes, which they kind of deemed as, <laughs> like, essential. But, like, Somewhat essential. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just said to our customers, look, you know, we'd love you know, for you to support us, mm. um, but we're not we're not going to send anything mm-hmm. until um, we get the all clear, basically. Mm. Yeah. Um, so so, and we did a sale. You know, we were just like, let's just do a sale. I yeah, think cool. We did like thirty percent off, my, mm. pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, because it was still like in between seasons at that time so most right. it, it would be generally when you would kind of do a sale anyway mm. like mm. we don't stick to traditional like no. sale right like, model anyway we don't True. have to yeah which is so good. just to mention that indigo and provisions you're providing how would you describe it sort of almost uh iconic sort of um workwear sort of inspired goods yeah yeah workwear inspired uh like Fashion mm-hmm. um, and like contemporary contemporary workwear, I guess yeah. in in a lot of ways. Like, um, yes, it's like functional. You could still like yeah. do those traditional work jobs using the garments that we have. But for the most part, people would wear it no. nowadays as yeah, fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, workwear for people that don't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Well, um, work yeah in different capacity yes, to how it was right. originally yeah. intended, and it is it's so it's so sort of steeped in um, culture and tradition and all of these other amazing things that it's just like craft, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and right. those these the kind of garments that we sell, like you know, heavy cotton, um, you know, shirt, shirting, mm. um, denim, um, thick pieces like that, like. They were always way more durable, mm. or that you know mm. they have a history of, of being high quality, durable, long lasting, and the kinds of people that would wear those pieces would also like repair them, yep. um, and modify them to like suit their needs. Yeah, and like that whole philosophy, like I'm super passionate about. Yeah, so it's like. While some people might turn their nose up, and there's like a big joke on on social media at the moment Is there? around like. Um, like blue collar clothing being like appropriated oh. into like fashion, <laughs> um, which I think is kind of funny. Well, and like people yeah. saying like, "Oh, Carhartt!" Like people like, "Oh, like my dad used to wear Carhartt to like work in the field, oh, and you're wearing Carhartt." To, so like, it actually is almost exactly what I just said. It, literally, what you just oh, said. Right. People are like making and they don't like it yeah that's ridiculous because fashion i mean that's one of the interesting things about fashion how it starts off as one thing and then it transcends Mm. Mm. well i don't know whether it transcends but it but it kind of can move in another direction and i mean leisure wear street wear sports wear i mean you know Mm. how many um even blue jeans yeah and yeah well that's right yeah i mean it's ridiculous how could you possibly restrict yeah your clothing to whatever you'd have to be a pretty hard out purist um yeah and man that's taking the fun out of life i know i know i i yeah i I don't buy into that i think i think it's quite i think it's quite funny really yeah 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 yeah. um oh they're just there was probably yeah it's just a cheap joke, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it, the, the whole thing is like poses or, or whatever people are like yeah. and gatekeeping, <laughs> like yeah, um, which is just ridiculous. But it, it's also kind of funny. Cause yeah, like, well, that's true. Yeah, it's good to have a sense of humour. Uh, yeah, 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 take it all with a with a yeah. pinch of salt, really. Mm. But yeah, like so we did sell online during the first like twenty twenty lockdowns and mm-hmm. stuff, and. Um, uh, we we did get some support there, um, and then when we reopened, um, people did come out and to support and and check in and see mm. how we're doing and you know um, try and support in however they could. Um, so like we bounced back after a, a couple of months after lockdown, um, which for me was really like really cool to to have that happen. Um, and then, yeah, we were 
pretty good until mm. then. Like twenty twenty one was was actually you know a really good year for us. Mm. Um, the the other sort of whenever there was a bit of a scare um, of a, another outbreak or yeah. there was that other like small lockdown for the South mm-hmm. Island, mm-hmm. Um, you know there was a dip. Um, um, as to be expected, but mm. it soon sort of came back again, which yeah. was good. So, yeah. did it give you a chance to kind of brainstorm and think of different ideas? Um, yeah, and then uh, implement them when you came back. Yeah, it, it, it did. Sort of, it did make me like really got to think outside the box. Mm. Um, mm. Got to just do any, anything and everything like I can. Like I think I went through a bit of like a roller coaster. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like the first, yeah, sorry, uh, I think the, the first lockdown, twenty twenty. Uh, I was just like questioning life. Shit, what the <laughs> hell's going to happen? I just kind of went into a bit of a depression. I think yeah, and was yeah. I just played video games for like two mm. weeks, mm. like and did nothing. Didn't even post on social media. Just was just like, <laughs> is this it? Mm. And then like. Um, you know, thanks to my That's partner. Good way to cope. You know, <laughs> it sounds pretty healthy actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was doing a bit of exercise as well, but like I was just like, "What the heck um, mm. is going to happen?" Yeah, yeah. Um, and my, you know, my partner was like, "Yeah, you should probably, you know, stop. Don't think the video games are helping anymore after two weeks. True. Maybe like you know, do a little bit of work each day or mm-hmm. every other day." Um, and that was good advice. And I yeah. s- started posting on social media again and sort of yeah. started getting back into some sort of rhythm of like, yeah. even though the shop wasn't open, yeah. trying to engage with our customers or people that like what we do and you slowly sort of get, do what you said, brainstorm some mm. ideas, mm. think about, you know, when we do go back, what, you know, what are we going to do? And yeah. So on. So <clears throat> it, was, it was an incredible, I think everyone will look back at it and kind of um, think it was a, Oh, no, they won't. Not everyone will look back at it and think that was a cool time to live through. But, I mean, certainly there were opportunities and... Because everyone reacts differently. It's almost like that flight, fright or um, Mm. freeze kind of thing. Yeah. And I suppose, um, yeah, coping with uncertainty and then kind of trying to make plans, not knowing the future. It felt like everyone was in kind of the same boat all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, And... That that was kind of unique, and I suppose it threw up a lot of things, and some people probably didn't go as well for. But um, it sounds like, yeah, you came up with some cool ideas. What what were some of them? Sorry, uh, uh, it, it was just more around like, um, I think I did like a like live Q and A on Instagram. Oh, nice, which went yep. really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of realised like more, and I sort of knew this ish but i realized more than ever that like a lot of like people support the business because of me oh right um and like people like me yeah yeah (laughs) um (laughs) which seems kind of funny to say but yeah like i think that would that would be described as like you're an integral part of the business yeah and um yeah i don't think you can sometimes we want to compartmentalize things and say I'm here the business is here and that's sure. over there but sometimes it's just kind of all mishmash together and yeah I think yeah. like some businesses like um, the owner can be separate and right. and people won't know who mm-hmm. that is or mm. and it doesn't really matter no. but certainly for my business I've found that like people like uh, respond to me really well and yeah. like like I know I'm good at what I do Mm. um and I think like being more personal and being like taking people behind the curtain Mm -hmm. and like sort of um removing some of that like mystery of like what a fashion or retail business is yeah like I think people connect to that and like relate on a personal level so I sort of was like decided, okay, I'm going to put my, myself out there more. Like I was mm-hmm. doing it here and there. Mm. And even this year, like I've decided like even more mm. um, and like put myself on social media and, yeah. you know, just like really like, yeah, people like if I'm not in the shop, chances are someone will come in and ask for me. Oh, right. And so you're so, kind of putting a, a human face on the business. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Making it personal, making mm. like, 
people care. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. like it yeah. is just, it is just me. I like, wonder, it sort of does go hand in hand because obviously the products mm. that you're selling have a story behind them. Mm. There's a quality and you kind of know there's a person behind them as opposed to a machine, perhaps. I mean, obviously there's tons of machines. But yeah, and then and then you're kind of you're standing behind that quality as well. So if something does go wrong, it's like they know you, your first name, mm. and they're like, <laughs> they know where I live. No, they don't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I don't you know. know. Yeah, I just make stuff up. It. No, that's true. <laughs> they they do like a lot of the time know my yeah. name, yeah. Um, and like like, and I do make it clear like. <clears throat> you know, like people can appro- mm. approach me, like if yeah. they have a question, whether yeah. they're like, you know, I always say like, thank, thank you to people for supporting the business, whether you put making a purchase or whether mm. you just follow us on Instagram yeah. and like, like what we do, whether mm. it's like a double tap like, or just like, you just appreciate it. Like, I think that's cool because, you know, like, yeah, maybe so you'll tell someone and they'll that's make a right. purchase. Yeah, support like, support comes in all sort of so, shapes mm, and sizes. Totally. It and doesn't have to be monetary. No. I think I've realised that with Sammy Bags as well. Uh, the power of, um, yeah, someone might know someone or their brother-in-law or their sister or such and such. And um, it might not be for them, but it might be for someone else. They might, yeah. Totally. I've had some networking. Yeah, really interesting interactions even recently with... Um, people coming into the store that like I wouldn't necessarily have thought is like it's not like necessarily our like target market Mm -hmm. um, who have like said the nicest things Mm. about the store and Mm. like who are visiting from out of town um, and say like we come and take a look around like every time we come to Christchurch we love your store and like that just is a huge compliment to me and like even and yeah. then some of them even say oh it's like not really our we used to be into fashion or it's not really our style mm. but they we they gave we, it up you know <laughs> yeah yeah used to be into fashion but now just, what are they wearing now just sweatpants all day um <laughs> and like scuff. yeah yeah <laughs> um uh yeah and they're just like yeah. love your store and I think that's really cool like that is a huge huge yeah. cool, huge thing like it doesn't matter that they don't buy anything like I'm sure they tell mm. people like mm. we love the store in Crusher check it out yeah and it's nice they're getting a kick out of it um, yeah. for whatever reason and that's um, why like I'm so yeah. into like physical retail spaces because yeah. like you can't you can't get that online no <clears throat> far less people go on mm. a website and it's like oh love your no, website no it's not nostalgic yeah. Well, I guess you could have a nostalgic... Everything I say, I realise it's wrong as soon as I say it. <laughs> but you could kind of have a nostalgic 90s... Uh, not 90s, sort of 2000s uh, website. Yeah. With some really crappy uh, graphics or something. But yeah. um, but but generally speaking, yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia um, in the art centre and also in, you know, the garments and mm. different things like that. There's that real tactile kind of... Um, thing about them um that's cool hey are you still i watched uh, one of the videos online um with uh is it bob we- weatherford mm-hmm. yeah we know bob uh, we've worked with him in the past yeah man yeah Bob's do you have awesome. anything good to say about bob milton <laughs> bob yeah man bob's awesome <laughs> Got heaps of good things to say about bob oh good sweet <laughs> we'll have him on the podcast yeah, yeah that'd be good yep. yeah i like he, he's good chat yeah it'd be good on the podcast yeah man um and we noticed that you were, that's probably an old video now, but you were dyeing stuff in store, like dyeing some t-shirts with indigo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That's cool. Do you, have you still kind of kept that up or? Uh, no, uh, not at the moment. Yeah. Um, like, <clears throat> yeah, I, I really like um, indigo dye and I like um, like the Japanese mm. traditions uh, of of dying with indigo yeah um and when i first opened like i had like all these ambitions of doing lots of events right. with the store yeah um and in the first kind of year i did uh-huh. uh i did like a whiskey tasting night with whiskey galore and they oh, like cool. came in yep. um but only like five people came yeah um which is in hindsight like that's fine it mm. takes time to build these things but yeah. at the time yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. i'm putting all this effort into it mm. and like no one's really coming um 
oh, to have in store events <laughs> now, you know, <laughs> like it's even more complicated. But yeah, yeah, yeah so true. I did the whiskey tasting, I did um, like a couple of like food truck come in and yeah, like yeah. shop and have a drink and food yeah. truck late night yeah. type yeah. Um, things. What else did I do? Um, I did like an indigo dye workshop weekend. Mm hmm. So that's where, like, that started mm -hmm. for us. Like, I'd done Indigo Dye, uh, Indigo Dye Workshop before, mm. like, been to one. And I was like, this is really cool. Like, I reckon I could probably, like, run one of these. Yeah. Um, and um, so there's a lady called um, uh, Deb Donnelly, and she's, like, the head of, like, the Indigo art, Japanese Arts like group in New Zealand um, and she's part Japanese and so and she's like gone to Japan for indigo dyeing and oh, right. she's awesome awesome lady mm. um, and um, she came down uh, like I organised it with her to ho like teach the workshops and we'd host them um, and so we set up the indigo dye that and like we yeah. had sold tickets and natural Fermentation, yes. Or did you? There's one where you can. You've got the natural one, and then you've got the caustic soda or something. Is that uh, correct? Or there's a natural one, and there's a like um, pre-reduced one. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that has uh, yeah lime in it. So right. it's like doesn't take. Obviously, you, the the natural one. The longer you let it ferment, the like richer the mm -hmm. the dye. Like it has a, a yeah uh, like a head like a yeah. Um, it's, so it it's had live, live. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, live yeah, you yeah, feed yeah. it yeah, yeah you change it you put bananas yeah. in mm -hmm. it and feed it and sugar and stuff <laughs> give it a name yeah yep. yeah yeah feed it make sure it's all happy and, and yep. healthy uh, so we had we had we tried one natural one but she on, she was only here for a day before mm -hmm. the following day the workshop started so yeah. but the natural one still worked like we still had it it was still going mm -hmm. um, and then the pre pre reduced so we had two that yeah. on the go um, do you get cause Dominic? I I don't. I've probably not told you this before, but I started off. I had a little t-shirt company at one point, which was a complete failure. Um, <laughs> and um, we, I was dying them. Oh yeah. Cool. Uh, I never did indigo though. Um, I've got indigo at home, and I went. I bought some of the uh, reduced stuff. Mm. I didn't like the idea of perhaps having the fermented thing. Well, maybe it's maybe I can use it for both. I can't remember now. But um, is it is it similar results? And do you dip it in dip it in the like solution and then lift it out and it almost exposes, and then you do a series of dips. Yeah. So you it um it's the oxygen that yeah. like um brings the dye out. And so the same process once you've got the two vats, the yeah. reduced one or the yeah. natural fermentation, is the process of dyeing the garment the same? Yes. Yeah. 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 Ah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think just with the net one you get like I guess more like natural coloring results but right. I don't think you can really tell no. these days yeah 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 um, yeah oh no yeah. that's interesting I've still got I, I bought all my dyes uh, most of them are extracts uh, from America mm. um, and it was expensive but I've got I think I've got K, a kg or more of I don't know if I've got a kg of indigo but I've got a kg of like I've got. I think I've got two kgs of weld, which is uh, yellow. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah natural dye is awesome. Dyes. Yeah, it's, it's so, pretty intense. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, it's because it, you get such unique and different results. Each yeah, time. yep, yeah, and the colours are really flattering on almost all skin types mm. and stuff like that. Like you can find the palette that kind of can suit anyone because mm. uh, it's kind of got that natural earthiness sort of feel about it. Yeah. Um, I should give it give it a try. Because, yeah, my yeah. Uh, my idea was, like, keep the vat going yeah. and, like, dye T-shirts or do, yeah. like, dye limited stuff. But I just realised, like, I just didn't have the time. No, that's right. To, to do it. Yeah. And, it's like, it's messy as well. So yeah. Like yeah. I, have, I had the vat stored in the shop for, like, a year. Yeah, for and long. hardly used it. Yeah, um, and in the end, I just got rid of it. Mm. Um, uh, um, but for the purposes of the video, like 
I died a couple of things. Yeah, no, it was that awesome. video with Bob. Um, and there's, I, I'd like to get it going again. Mm. And there's um, a lady who started teaching classes at Rekindle uh, opposite oh, yeah. us, who's yeah. trying to grow it because New Zealand, we oh yeah, we could actually grow and go pretty well here, mm. um, especially in the South Island. So she's yeah. trying to grow it. So oh, cool. Hopefully, I, I'm see her. You know, yeah. I mean, and, and I'd love to do the workshops again. We we had a, a relatively decent turnout, but uh, ended up only breaking even because yeah. like Deb, being the foremost specialist in indigo dye in New Zealand, and wasn't cheap, cheap as no. she should. No, you know, she actually gave me a really good deal, mm. like, um, and was amazing. Um, but like, I realised only being open three months, like, maybe it was a bit ambitious mm. to try mm. and like do all these events and wonder why yeah, people weren't. On coming because no, it's I mean, like that's how you learn right yeah oh yeah. huge learning experience i'm glad you know definitely don't regret it because it mm. was so fun mm. and everyone that came loved it and people who and that was the other thing with events people who came weren't necessarily like gonna like again target market type situation it's like i didn't do the workshop because i wanted people to then buy stuff from the store no a few people did yeah which was great but it was like they then like told their friends and we sometimes get people come in and they're like oh mm. you're still doing the indigo workshops or mm. like are you going to do it again and it is and so it was niche like, yeah and I wanted people I always wanted the store to be more than just a clothes shop like mm-hmm. I didn't want people yeah I wanted to to have like personality and depth and yeah like people to to consider it in a different way than like yeah. they would a traditional retail store yeah which re- requires layers and um different stuff going on textures and stuff yeah which yeah you're not going to get from just having racks of clothes mm. um no matter how hard you try perhaps um yeah that's cool Do, have you seen that wee streetwear shop on colombo street that's opened up i think they bring in stuff from america like uh you know they go over there and well, maybe they don't go over there. They probably don't go over there. No. They just somehow get clothing from oh, yeah. America, second-hand clothing, and they're selling it in, um, on Colombo Street, just sort of in Sydenham. Uh, Is that the... And they, like... Do they print T-shirts there I think as they well? do, yeah. It's like yeah. a tiny wee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shoes, they paint shoes, sneakers oh, yeah. and I've, things. I've driven past it a couple of times, and it's really yeah. sparked my curiosity. I'd love, I'd love yeah, to go yeah, and have a look. Yeah, yeah, you should get in there. Yeah. Do you have a... Because I think in that video you mentioned you had like a vintage rack as well. We did. Uh, again, we phased that out. Yep. Um, again, just became too much um, mm. admin. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we wanted to do something different in like the vintage space and mm-hmm. like focus on like uh, like denim and uh, yeah. like Western, like Americana oh, yep. kind of stuff rather mm. than the 90s stuff that's super oh, popular yeah. at the moment. Yeah, true. Um uh, but and again, like people's perception around price for vintage mm. is a bit off. So um, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I, I went into the one on the um, Colombo Street, this new one, and I I get the vibe. It is the '90s sort of thing, which is cool because you know I'm a child of the '90s sort of. Um, uh, and yeah, the prices kind of reflect the garments and stuff. Yeah, probably I can accept them, but. I took someone who was, you know, 20 years younger than myself, um, and yeah, she wasn't having it. <laughs> she wasn't having a bar of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, eh? Yeah. But yeah, we, we had a vintage track for a little while, and we sold quite a few pieces, but mm-hmm. again, we needed the space for like our, like, stuff that we order in advance. Yeah, exactly. And yep. the admin of like, because we got a few pieces from mm. people and would like, pay them once it's sold if yeah, it's sold and yeah. just dealing with different people for, and people started bringing stuff in just just randomly yeah yeah, yeah like and pe- and like people would call us and be like oh you're a vintage store and it's like, nah, like yeah. trying to trying yeah. to explain like and i didn't yeah again didn't want to re- make it confusing like what is this place is yeah, it a true. vintage store is it yeah. a, this is it this because you it could go too far um you could go too wide yeah exactly yeah, you don't want it for New Zealand, especially like be too niche. Mm-hmm. Like some stores you see overseas that are pure like yeah. high end, like Japanese workwear, 
and then you don't want to be like too broad where you're like start stocking things that mm. every other store has or yeah uh, you, like yeah yeah across too many different categories mm. yeah so that's quite a cool shirt you've got on <coughs> thank you <coughs> what's what's that one this brand is uh called 316 316 oh yeah they're from uh new york yeah and um they've been sort of in the space that we occupy like in terms of brand and styling for mm-hmm. for quite a while since like 2008 mm. and they started off just making jeans oh, right. um, and then yeah progressed into lots of other categories yeah have you ever um like and what about also i saw the leather being made mm-hmm. uh was it key rings and wallets yep. and stuff? Um, is that still all? Is that, is that still yep. going ahead? That's cool. still that's still happening um, in store. Um, and uh, Josh was work. So it's called Sonder Sonder Leather, oh, and yeah. it was started by Jack, a guy called James Richardson. Um, and he was working out of the original welder mm-hmm. before it became what it is today. Yeah, um, and um, my friend Josh uh, Bradshaw, who he was working as an artist out of the welder, mm-hmm. um, and he was watching James like making all these waltz and stuff, and then was like, "Oh, this is cool! Like, can you teach me how to do it?" He's a very sort of hands-on guy, like mm. pick, like craft, and yeah. So James taught Josh how to make them. James eventually um, was like, "Oh, Josh, do you want to make them for me?" Because I've got like a, another day job. This is like my side hustle, and I yeah. don't really have time to like mm-hmm. make them anymore. But I want to keep going with the business. So Josh started making them for James. Josh started working for me part time as well. Ah, I see. Um, that's how oh, we nice. kind of connected. Yeah. And then um, it was Josh's idea to have the setup in the store, mm-hmm. um, because he was like, "I'm working for you. I'm also working making these wallets. You sell these wallets mm. already." Mm. Um, I was getting them wholesale off James. Yeah. Why don't we, like, combine the two and I'll, like, set them up in here? Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I'd always thought about having a making element mm. in the shop anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, the dream was to have someone, like, making and hemming and repairing jeans in the oh, store. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'd still love to do that at some yeah, point if I out. find the right person. Ah, um, yeah, or I could do that. take the time to teach myself. <laughs> Yeah, there's people in Christchurch that would be into that, I'd say. Um, I don't know whether I could do that. Damn, there I go again. <laughs> I could do that. Com- <laughs> yeah. I can completely go to the opposite. Have you ever met a guy called Andy Wa? I have, yeah. yeah, yeah I've yeah. met Andy a few times. Yeah, and I, I have sold him some of my sewing machines. I used to have eight sewing machines, and I ended up uh, you know, moving houses. And before I moved house, I thought, I've been dragging these things around with me for such a long time. I'm just going to sell some before I move this time. And I sold them. I think I only sold him one, actually. It was a, a buttonhole machine. Oh, um, awesome. But he was, he was stoked. He lost a lot of his machinery over the earthquakes and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know what he's up to these days, whether he's still in the game. He's, nah, yeah. He, he's making art now. Yeah, like, I've seen that. Amazing art. That really is really cool. Really, but yeah. he's not making jeans anymore. No. I it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. His jeans were amazing. Yeah. He had, like, I think he came, he, he like, came into the, because raw denim, salvage denim is a whole, like, universe. Like, yeah. absolute diehards, mm, like, mm. love, love mm. it. Um, and, like, his jeans are regarded some of the best in I the know. world. Yeah. And he just, he's just like, nah, I don't want to do it anymore. Just is that kind of, right? Yeah, he's just like, oh, nah. <laughs> Man, we have to... I have I'd to like, track down Andy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I've... Yeah, he's he's such a cool guy. And I've, I've tried. Yeah. I've not, I'm not, like, yeah. really tried, but no. I, I've kind of floated the idea, and he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. reckon, like, being an entrepreneurial type of person myself mm. and being a kind of crafty person and stuff, yeah, it's a real struggle. It's a real struggle trying to create a business out of that. And, you know, in this day and age, um, you know, due to a number of things, like, you know, the, the you know, manufacturing mm. offshore and the labour rates and all these different things and getting stuff over to New Zealand and things, it's a real struggle. But, I mean, he certainly gave it a really good go. Um, and, yeah, it's interesting, eh, because you will meet people who will... 
who yeah would have rated him massively highly and Huge. Um, you, you see online and it's kind of like well but yeah there's a reality which needs to work it needs to work yeah yeah, yeah definitely um it, it does need to work mm. and like he's obviously an incredibly creative person mm. and i guess that wasn't filling mm. his yeah you know creative well, energies anymore yeah i gave up my t-shirt thing and i sort of feel the same way i've only just Last year, I sold off my the la, the remaining of my sewing machines. I've still got a plain sewer and an overlocker, but I've got rid of the other ones. I've still got all of my organic cotton and merino, awesome, still sitting there, and I've still got all of my dyes, like thousands of dollars worth of dyes, yeah, and all of my chemicals and stuff. And it's kind of the next next bit for me to kind of break it down. But it kind of yeah, it hurts because you're kind of breaking down a little bit of yourself and yeah. selling it off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You put but, a um, lot of into but it. also I I kind of think you know if you were like you know wanted to have someone in store doing things, I mean you can always go out and buy a new sewing machine, and you can always like those things aren't totally um, gone for good. Yeah, true. Um, you can kind of shelve it almost a little bit. And Park then it. pick it up later. Yeah, yeah. You find a new like enthusiasm for it, or like a yeah. new like whole new mm. way of like approaching it. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I still think it's within the realms of possibility to get someone in like mm. making and and uh, once like, a week for a couple of hours, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the other thing as well is like fi- finding that person that like ha- like doesn't rely on it for mm. like their whole income no. you know because yeah. it, definitely to start it would be like a few hours a week mm. so it mm. would you know someone who has that time available mm. that doesn't mind that doesn't like need like financial huge you know financial gain out of it yeah and yeah. Um, that just maybe loves the craft and loves the idea exactly, of, yeah. of it like you know how cool is it to walk into a store and see someone like actually making something that would be cool um which yeah. is why i love the the leather good stuff and mm-hmm. like we as soon as josh started like making stuff in store we like sold so much more of it yeah yeah, um, yeah. because you know you've got that emotional connection of mm-hmm. like i made this for you here mm. right in front of you mm, mm. Um, and we can personalize them with initials and things you know and that's really cool yeah um so yeah i think it's a really cool element to uh, again it adds mm. like what we talked about that depth yeah of like it's not just a store like a couple of racks <clears throat> with some clothes on it like there's, yeah there's stuff happening in here yeah 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 and yeah, there's the noise of the sewing machine. Hey Dave, sorry to interject. My, yeah. um, can you hear me? My headphones have turned off. I can hear. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Can you do that from your panel? Probably not. Um, <laughs> can you press that button there, maybe? Um, I pressed a couple of buttons and nothing seemed to happen. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But now I know that happens when you go outside. Oh, dang. Oh, right. Yeah, normally you take them off, do you? There you go. Try yeah, normally next try time that. I just leave them. They yeah. might reconnect or yeah, not. Cheers, mate. I've got this random... This this creates a yeah. Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. A dongle. Yeah. It's... Uh, oh, I don't. It's all good. You could probably just take them off. I, I don't know, even know why we wear them anyway. <laughs> I think it, like, cancels out some of the outside noise yeah, yeah, yeah. not that there's much so I literally can just <laughs> yeah. this without them. Yeah. oh totally I feel yeah. so you, more you might still fine you can't, and you can still I don't feel like I'm in a right? spaceship or something no but oh that's kind of cool yeah <laughs> we can still hear you good good oh, on the on the video I watched the um, you talked a little bit about the Japanese denim scene mm. have you guys talked about that yet uh, it seemed pretty interesting we touched on it just before <clears throat> but yeah it's well, Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's it, one one of the things that suddenly struck me the other day, which um, I've been watching World War Two in color, um, and all of a sudden I realised that the Japanese—I don't even know how it kind of came about—but they sort of have become obsessed. Well, you can't say obviously the whole nation, but there's a segment that become obsessed with this almost American workwear. It's kind of like, how did that happen? Like America dropped the bomb on them mm, twice, mm, mm. and then that's the kind of. Because what era would the workwear be that they are interested in? It's sort of that 1930s, 40s, 50s yeah. kind of thing. And I thought, Interesting, I've, I've yeah. never put that those two things together. It, it's so many generations ago. Yeah. I suppose I mean, so. they've been obsessed with it for ages. Yeah. It's not just a recent thing. Right. Um, there's a great book, um, and it's called, 
I'm probably going to butcher this, but it's called Amatora. Mm. Um, and it's the history of um, American style in Japan. Yeah. Um, great book, really great book. Yeah. And it basically explains how it kind of came about. I see. Um, but it was like, it was like post, you know, uh, World War, um, American, America was still ocup- occupying Japan. Right. And there was like a recession, mm. a huge recession in Japan. And then like, I think the GIs started selling some of their American clothing to <sighs> Japanese people. That would explain um, it, yeah. At, or trading it for yeah. other things. And then, like, it, it sort of became a symbol of rebellion because in Japan there's, like, huge rules around dress code, mm. what you could wear and, and things like mm. that. And so when Japanese people started wearing jeans, mm. like, it was a huge thing and, like, ah, everyone right. thought it was, like, gangs. Well, it would have and, and, like, and plus it would have been against... Like, you were wearing the enemy's yeah. uniform, kind of, in a way, yeah. I suppose. Um, and so, yeah, like, the, the, the book does a way better job of explaining than I could ever do. But mm. it's, it's a, um, it kind of stemmed from there. And then a lot of, yeah, se- like subcultures of Japan would look to America for... Because mm. America was this, this place of like mystery and, and like success and, you know, Hollywood and all of this stuff. And so it was like... They started taking their cues fashion-wise from there and mm. from, like, Ivy and Varsity to Denim to, True. like, Marlon Brando leather jackets. <laughs> and you even know. Mickey Mouse and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just... And it's never gone. Like, they mm. still... No. You yeah. know, vintage is the biggest in right. the world, probably, yes. in yeah, Japan. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they, and they... And then they started buying up, like, the all looms. the old sewing machines, yeah. all the looms, so yeah. they could then... Because that's the other big thing in Japan yeah. is reproduction. So yeah. they'll copy yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and improve yeah. mm-hmm. and they'll do it meticulously. Mm. Because in Japan, in Japanese culture, it's about doing it like well, not yeah. doing it, not, not mass producing it, not mm-hmm. like just getting it done. It's about like doing it mm. slow and meticulous and la- long lasting. Yeah. And having respect for the craft. And so, like, that's why Japanese denim is so big as well. It's, like, mm. because it's, like, these the way you used to make and wear jeans is respected. Yeah. And so the quality... And yeah, they're kind of yeah. preserving it. I yeah. mean, they're preserving a lot of that kind of history where America's sort of, like... I know there's a bit of a movement towards American made, um, but, you know, they probably have a lot of the same struggles we do. Like, I mean, Christchurch had a massive um, clo- clothing industry um, and... You know, Litchfield Street, the, what we're on, that was down in the next block and stuff, that was that was all the clothing manufacturers. Mm. Um, and it was kind of like an area. I don't know, they've, they haven't sort of um, brought that back in any way, shape or form. There are a few clothing makers around the place. There um, are, yeah, there are a few. Uh, we used to make... There used to be a denim factory. Yeah. And the, uh, the owner of the old denim factory comes in to the store. Does he? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Such a lovely guy. And, like, he comes in and he looks at the jeans mm. and how they're made. And he talks yeah. to me about it. Yeah. And, he, and he's like... Ah, that's amazing. The first time I, I met yeah. him, like, he was just looking at the jeans and he was like, oh, tell me about these jeans. Tell me about how they're made. Yeah. And, like... Sneaky. That's, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> and, then, and then he was like, oh, I used to run the fac- a factory yeah. in, in Christchurch. I forget yeah. the name. Um, but... And so, yeah, he comes in every now and then and just checks in on how we're going. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. like, I love, you know, I used to mm. work as Jeans Factory. I really, I'm still interested mm. in denim and what's happening in the denim yeah. world nowadays. Like, so, That's cool. Yeah, funny funny really story. Cool. When I visited New York and whenever it was, a long time ago, 2009 or something. Where were where, where, where? we? Um, Harlem. I want to say Harlem. There was a just a random shop and I you know clothing fashion and I was trying to pick up different pieces t-shirts different unique kind of pieces and um, went in there and there was Canterbury Clothing Company uh, like kind of long sleeve kind of rugby shirts, rugby shirts. on the thing oh, wow. and I, I sort of was so weirded out by it and I was trying to tell the person in the shop 
I ended up buying some shoes off them. But I, my accent was obviously too broad or whatever. He had no idea what I was talking about. That's that's funny. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Well, yeah, crazy. New Zealand is so highly regarded in, like, the manufacturing industry. Mm. It's, it is a shame that, like, yeah. clothing, by and large, is not produced mm. here anymore. Mm. And I think people don't really understand, because, like, a lot of people want New Zealand-made things now and and clothing. And so and some people, like, sort of turn their nose up at what we have because it's not made in New Zealand. And I think they just really don't understand... Yeah, how expensive it is to produce here, and yeah. if we were to sell New Zealand-made clothing, like the price it would be would be exactly. unattainable for yeah. most people. Well, my t-shirts were going sort of 120 to 150 bucks, mm. um, and that was me sort of factoring in basically a minimum wage. Yeah, um, for myself, which yeah, I don't know, but it and was so yeah. yeah, and that so that we sell the odd t-shirt at that price mm. and like. Made in Japan, yeah. generally, like yeah. naturally dyed or something like that. Mm. Um, and we sell a few, but mm. it's uh, it is like you have to really tell the story. Exactly, like it yeah. has to have. Like yeah. I think people yeah, would probably bucks for a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so yeah, it is a real shame. And ho- I mean, hopefully over time we can bring manufacturing mm. back or grow mm. the manufacturing injury industry so that the mm. prices could come down a wee bit. Because yeah. that's the thing. If there's so small uh, amount of producers, mm. the cost will always remain high. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, I try to explain as best I can to people and some people take it on board, others mm. not so much. They just think you yeah. should only sell New Zealand made. Yeah, um, yeah. Nah, that's a that's a that's a pretty tough one. I mean, even with Sammy bags, we, you know, pricing is one of our biggest kind of struggles. To, um, I don't, yeah, I still don't know whether we got it right, but I kind of work backwards. I don't know whether that's the right thing to do or not. But um, yeah, that's cool. Far so, enough. Sounds about right. Working backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Ah, cool. So twenty twenty two, just gonna. How do you yeah. how do you feel about it? <laughs> I mean, we've, we're now in traffic light red. Is that what people call it? What do people? Yeah, call it? yeah. I, I don't know. The, the, um, yeah. I was listening to talk back last night, and the, and the Marcus Lush was like, what, "What's like? What is the name of this traffic light red? Code red? Alert level red? Yeah, just red. Uh, red. Yeah, red. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, I'm starting to Mother feel source red. Yeah." <laughs> I'm starting to feel a wee bit nervous again. Yeah. Um, because I thought... Well, now, now with this one, we don't really have the government support. We're kind of like getting some of the restrictions. What I reckon is going to happen... I know that, you know, whatever, coronavirus, all sorts of opinions out there and stuff. But what I can, from what I can tell, the Omicron wave, you know, the UK is sort of dropping restrictions. America's beginning to do the same, mm. uh, dropping the mandates, dropping restrictions after the wave has passed, the Omicron wave. Right. The Omicron wave in South Africa, I think, kind of took about six, six to eight weeks mm-hmm. of hard out, you know, that massive spike going in up cases, and coming yeah. back down. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it seems when we're dropping back down, um, because if you compare the, the infection rates, so like the case numbers to the deaths, um, all of the other peaks, the deaths and the and the and the case numbers sort of match each other quite quite well. Okay. Whereas this one, this, it just doesn't match. Yeah. I think yeah. the deaths are still being caused by Delta. Omicron's really causing pretty much none. Just and, high um, infection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about crazy health thing, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think yeah. hopefully, like, yeah. I, I thought. So once we're there's through this a, wave, there's still uncertainty, wave, but yeah. yeah, I think hopefully things will remain relatively similar in terms of like going about day to day life. Yeah. Um, um, but like, yeah, ho- hopefully uh, halfway through this year, things will start to. Yeah, relax I think so. A bit and yeah, I reckon even maybe Easter. Hopefully, yeah. we're getting into it. But then, of course, we're going to be coming into winter, which may, which sort of is. Like a natural time for kind of colds and flus. Yeah. So we might see another slight bump over winter, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, but anyway. Yeah. It's, it's the so virus is just going to do what it it's does, It's going right? to do what it does. And, and so, mm. yeah, I think, like, we're maybe preparing to, like, live with it now yeah. rather than, like, 
shut down all the time, which exactly. I think, like, as long as you're, you know, mm. vaccinated, mm. You, you should be... I'm not. Good. Really? <laughs> I'm not. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah, well, that's right. No, vaccination does provide um, a large number of people... Um, what it gives <laughs> yeah, them, yeah, and the reasons why they take it is valid. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not denying yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, personally, I chose not to be. But um, yeah, that's right. I think everyone needs to take, make those decisions, and then mm-hmm. be like, okay, let's carry on with life. Mm. Whatever you, whatever does, you know, whatever result you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I, I'm I think ultimately we're all looking forward to the same yeah. outcome, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I just, just from a business perspective. A bit of like planning around around uncertainty, yeah. But taking each day as it comes, yeah, and trying to make the most of of getting people excited and getting people to keep supporting. Like people will have different priorities, people will have different things on their mind. Mm. Um, you know, I went through a stage of thinking like, you know, people have too much to care about. Why would they? care about like our shop and essentially luxury like a real luxury fashion stuff like what are we providing Mm. um but then i sort of pivoted from from that thinking to to like well you know we have worked hard to build something that's not just clothes on a rack like Mm. and and people always need clothing whether they Mm. need the clothing that we have or not you know it's up up for them to decide but like yeah, that, I don't know where I'm going. No, with this no I, I think there's an unintended <laughs> consequence. I think, like, all too many times, as a nation, as a society, as individuals, we think we know what's going to happen, and the opposite happens. Those old unintended consequences. And I think sometimes um, you think, ah, oh, no one's going to be interested. But in actual fact, everyone wants to escape the reality, and they 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 sort of end up going in that direction even more. And saying, yeah. well, there is something real out here um, and we don't, you know, we can get into something again. Thank goodness for that. We've just been kind of stuck in our heads. We can go out there and buy cool things. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, I think where, where my thought was going before was like, I've tried to build a bit of a, like a community. I know it's yeah. a word that's used <clears throat> quite a lot at the moment, but, you know, a place where people can connect in a mm. way and, mm. and, and relate have, in with totally. common interests because yeah, yeah, yeah. the things that I'm into mm. is not just not yeah. just the yeah. clothing in the store and uh, while I don't like go into everything that I'm into like yeah. there in that space you know from the music that we play and the events yeah. that we do and you know the, the cafes and, and p- things that we support like I think people connect to that as well totally I reckon like Indigo Provisions you know if you've got a whole bunch of shops in December, they're playing Christmas music. You go into Indigo and Provisions, and you know you're not going to get Christmas music. That's like a, in a commercial sort of sense, in the cafe or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you kind of stand out from the crowd a wee bit, and you're not so, going to follow. And you are going to offer people something different. Um, and as long as they're prepared and up for it, mm. that's cool. Yeah, definitely. I'm terrible at analogies. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 20, 2022 is yep. just more of the same and. For us and 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 uh, yeah, just keep on keeping on mm, mm. And, and like just yeah, try and grow a wee bit would hey, be nice. Hey, but are like, you thinking of bringing any new brands? And it's sort of like brands in this space. Are there new ones popping up every year that are um, notable and reliable? Um, like brand new to market brands, probably mm. harder to discover. Yeah. True. Um, but there's so many brands out there. There's yeah. so many great brands out there that it's you can't stock them all. You're spoilt for choice. Spoilt for choice, yeah. absolutely. So I go, uh, like, I think it's important to continue to build the relationships with the brands that we have. Mm-hmm. And they've been picked based on, like, I, I love the story, the clothes, the, the people behind them. Yeah. Um, we might introduce a few new ones here and there. But, like, where we're at at the moment is if we introduce a lot of new brands, that means reducing, like, stock from 
our existing brands. Yeah. So it's like yeah. it's always a dynamic of yeah, true. Uh, of figuring that out. Yeah. Um, and also as we grow, it gives us more kudos to approach maybe a different brand mm-hmm. that has you know a bigger following or yeah. Yeah. you know that we've liked or wanted for a while yeah. but you know it was too early days yeah um yeah so they evaded your grasp yeah there's there's a few of those but so yeah and and to answer your question probably a couple yeah definitely a couple of new brands this year yeah. um and then just awesome collections from our existing mm. ones mm. just um to drop back mm. like way 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 back because Obviously, I haven't been a part of this conversation so much. What what the heck is Indigo? You talked about growing Indigo. Uh, indigo is a flower um, that can be processed into a oh, dye and um, is used primarily in, like, jeans. So a pair of jeans would usually, well, used to be dyed with natural Indigo, but now it's primarily dyed with synthetic Indigo. But it's a blue, blue, like yeah, rich, yeah, I see. rich, deep yep. blue. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue's a fascinating colour in the dye world because um, the I think, well, I don't know, the only other, but woad, woad is a, um, I think so different, obviously back in the day, um, back in the day day. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> when they were trying to create blue. Um, probably, I think purple came from maybe a shellfish, okay. um, but uh, the, that kind of royal purple. Blue, I think, like the French had woad, and um, I think, yeah, the other half of the world had indigo, maybe. Oh, like yeah. the East maybe had uh, indigo. But um, they, they had real similar ways of... Um, I think blue is a tricky colour. I think woad has to be a fermentation type of thing as well. Um, hey, and talking about seeds, I've, I bought some uh, seeds from different plants one time just off a trade me, somewhat up in Nelson. Um, and I, plan, I was planning on growing uh, weld, especially weld is yellow. Um, and that... Um, that's a really expensive colour as well. Mm. Um, and I can't remember the other plant dyes and, that I got. But. And like specific colours in terms of clothing used to have a lot of significance in terms of like positions in society and luxury oh, wow. and uh, things yeah. like that. I, yeah. um, I don't think it's like that anymore, thankfully. But, um, yeah, true. You know, like pur- what all purple yeah. potentially was yeah, like yeah, a real yeah. royal yeah. colour yeah. and like... You know, so yeah, and the red, the cochineal for the royal, I think the royal guards had their gar- garments dyed with cochineal, which is the yep, insect that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, so, and the shellfish which produce the purple, I think, yeah, it's just probably notoriously difficult to harvest, and you can only get small quantities, like kind of precious metals. Yeah. Um, I think they had sort of precious colours, which yeah. were more expensive. So it's, so it's so interesting to think about that, like. That's that really interests me about clothing mm. and like and fashion because yeah. it's like it's been around for so long whether mm. like we realize it or not and it's like clothing is such an integral part of like society and culture yeah and like everyone's day to day life whether they're consciously like or unconsciously the clothing that they choose says yeah. something about you oh, it's totally. part of your personal yeah, yeah. story yeah so yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, totally. I love I love the idea, um, which sometimes I point it out to different people, but um, where people just wear leisure wear all the time, kind of, and it's like there's this idea that they've kind of, they no longer have to work. And back in the day, they perhaps would have, they, the wealthy people who didn't have to work would have had really flash kind of clothes, but now it's almost a sign that they're almost rubbing it in other people's face. I can just wear trackies. And gym clothes all day long. That's how. That's how much I've made it. I've made it to this point where, like, kind of Kim Kardashian or whatever. Mm. You know, they well, they they're just in this like super mm. elite um, leisure class. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, or like, this is how much I don't care about clothing. Yeah, that I'm just going to wear track pants. Yeah, but it's like you've still chosen. That's right. Like, and you're still in, even though senior. like in your mind you're mm. like. I, I'm not. Mm. I'm not choosing, but you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really interesting yeah. in that way. Do you remember in the '90s there were some brands that came out which were specifically not branded, and they were. I think there was a pair of sneakers which just had a black scribbled dot. Like it was, oh, yeah. it was if someone had a black charcoal pen and just scribbled a dot, 
and that was the brand, and it was kind of you know really yeah, anti yeah. brand, anti brand, yeah, and yeah, anti brand brand, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Love it. So clothing is such a, a social signifier or status signifier. Mm. It's like to the point where I'm not interested in status. That's why I'm wearing these sorts of clothes, which mm. is obviously a status statement. Mm. It's like wow, complicated. Yeah, yeah, it can get real like. It's a psychological crossover there. Yeah, messy in that way. Yeah. And like, you know, people wear, like, even the history of the t shirt and like graphic mm. tees, you know, it was a re- like, you know, when people started printing on t shirts, often it was like a political statement or something, you know, a, a band or like advertising that people realize the power of like the t shirt as an advertising marketing tool. Um, you know, so you'll see people walking around in t-shirts, yep. and you, you'll see a print, and you know, you'll think about mm. it, and you, you, you know, it'll say something, and you'll be like, "Oh God," or yeah, or it's got a cool design on it, or yeah, like even the t-shirt is like a huge statement. Piece. Well, I guess when we put that t-shirt on, and it's got whatever graphic it is, we associate psychologically with that graphic we put ourselves in that state a little bit mm. it draws us into that reality a little bit i guess yeah i mean you guys are both wearing stripes that's yeah what from does that say? i was just again check that out as well here's yeah. the menu uh Dominic. it's french french navy originally yeah. oh, true true yeah, yeah i saw it was, that on, it was on, uniform. on your video yeah so yeah. you know stripes uh were made originally uh, made in France, in Brittany. Yeah. Uh, they, they were produced as a uniform for the French Navy. There used to be uh, 23 or 21 stripes, which signified the different uh, Napoleon uh, battles or victories. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, I have never heard that before. No, me neither. I know there's a, there's a boat neck, and supposedly the sailors, I think, were able to take it off Super quickly, okay. If they needed to, oh, they have that sort of square neck. Uh, not square. It's sort of it's like a wide. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. It's kind of yes. like yeah. It's yeah, a sco- like a. But I've never heard of the stripes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. So again, this is you're wearing workwear. Yeah, exactly. Like technically, it's it originated as a yeah a military garment. A lot of garments have reference in military as well. True, true. Yeah, um, or yeah, or naval, navy, mm. or air force. Um, yeah, so it's like it's really interesting. Yeah, man. So those crossovers are always just changing and combining and permeating and evolving. Yeah, yeah, forever. Exactly. Yeah. And now I think I we should stop them. Yeah. <laughs> Stop! Stop the crossover. That, that's what some people want, right? Or for for whatever reason, they seem to. No, yeah. I'm not having any of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they want to gatekeep or like fix something in a certain time period or certain yeah. style. Well, yeah. Like uh, he, some uh, some things obviously belong in the, in the past or yeah, should true. you know permeate into modern <clears throat> society because we've progressed well, from there. But I think clothing is different. yeah. The crazy thing about the Japanese taking on the American culture and workwear and stuff and despite their history I kind of the only other thing I can think of is um, some of the gangs in New Zealand um, the wear the German helmet um, oh yeah the motorcycle gangs they yeah. wear a German helmet and you know it's I don't know there was sort of right one kind of fascist but a lot of them are made up with um, you know perhaps Maori people in them so it's kind of that kind of clash of yeah, things, but it's ultimately they're taking it on because of the rebellion. Like, remember the the bulldog? I think is that the um, I think that's the mongrel mob. mongrel mob. Yeah, yeah they've got that bulldog. I think that's a English kind of thing. English bulldog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. They're, yeah, people will know probably way more than I do. <laughs> it's but. funny. I I didn't click to the like association with the bulldog. And one of the brands that we work with, the owner has an English bulldog. Oh yeah. Um, and they, I, I had a few like accessories with the bulldog printed on it. Right. That we sold in the store and yeah. like they didn't sell very well at all. Oh. I was trying to like work yeah. out why, why they weren't selling. And then one yeah. time a guy came in um, and he was like, Oh, mongrel mom. Oh yeah. Yep. You guys, yeah. you guys associated with the mongrel mob, and I was like, "No way, no!" <laughs> so, and I was like, "Why?" And it's English bulldog. It's their yeah. logo. Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, ah, oh, never getting anything with a bulldog on it anymore." Yeah, yeah, that's quite specific. Yeah, it was but very, very interesting. Crazy. <clears throat> yeah, we should do a bulldog biscuit. <laughs> 
Well, we were going to do that with the Cavalucci. We were going to like stamp a horse's head on it at the yeah, stage. That would have so been cool. I never got around to that. Maybe for 2022 we could, Milton. But Dominic, I do have. Um, I got given a one of your items, clothing items for for a gift. Oh. And man, it feels real good when oh, I put nice. it on. It's like yeah, so nice putting on good quality. Definitely yeah. lifts lifts your spirits up a little bit. Awesome. What what did you get? Uh, it's just a t-shirt with yeah. um, like a western scene on the back. Oh, cool. Um, indigo provisions. And she's holding a shotgun, oh, smoking, yeah, cool. sitting on the table. Yeah. That's framed in barbed wire. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, one of our T-shirts. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, that, that's big for me, texture and quality, mm. and it feels substantial. It feels good when yeah, you wear exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's, like, a huge point of difference. Like, yeah. It just uh, it makes me feel sort of connected into life somehow. Great. Yeah. That's all I could ever hope for yeah. from, from what we do. Yeah, it's been very good. What would you Thank like you. for breakfast? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the uh, the wee butty. Okay, mate. I'll good. whack it up for you. Thank you. No worries. That's cool. So Thanks, so Dominic, for coming in. Do you want a bit of hollandaise on that? Oh. Yeah, please. Okay. That'd be lovely. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. in. Awesome, awesome chat. Um, I can tell as soon as we switch all of this off, we're going to carry on. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. What what time do you guys open usually? Uh, seven o'clock. So I have 15 minutes of hacking everything up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. cool. Cheers. Thanks, man.